Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. We had a really big snowstorm here in Connecticut over the weekend and I didn't have a chance to get together with my friend to finish fitting the shirt where I'm showing you how to add ease to a shirt that's too small. So I have to put that project on the back burner again, but I do have an exciting pants fitting tutorial for you instead. One of my subscribers sent me pictures of her and her friend who had similar wrinkles in the back and they wanted to know how to fix their pants patterns to get rid of those wrinkles. So I got permission to use their pictures and I just wanna show you the back view here. Now you can see from this back view, they both have wrinkles under their butt. And if I only had that one view to look at, I would suggest scooping down to remove some of the vertical length on the back leg to pick that up. The exciting thing about these two examples is they're actually different. And this is a really good opportunity for me to show you how important it is to look at all views when you're trying to decide how to fit your pants pattern. So from the back, it looked like there was extra vertical length, but now let's check out the side views. You can see here that the white pair of jeans looks balanced along the side seam and there's just some wrinkles underneath her butt. On the blue pair of jeans, you can see that there are diagonal wrinkles going from front to back, pulling down towards the back. So what that's telling me is the blue pair of jeans has too much vertical length on the back leg and it's pulling down the front and it's creating wrinkles on the back leg. Whereas the white pair of jeans is balanced lengthwise front to back because there are no drag lines across the side seam and there's no extra rumpled up fabric on the back leg a little bit lower down from the crotch level. So by looking at the side view, I was able to tell that there were two different things going on in these two different pairs of pants, even though they looked similar from the back view. Let's start with the white pair of jeans. Let's put up the side view again. You can see that the wrinkles on this pair of jeans are really just isolated to right underneath her butt at crotch level. What that's telling me is there isn't enough room front to back and it's causing the crotch points to pull and create wrinkles. Now this could be because both crotch points are too short and there just isn't enough horizontal space or it could be that the front is too short or it could be that the back is too short. So the cool thing is in your actual pants muslin, you can test the theory of adding room front to back to see if it eases those wrinkles. So what I wanna do here is show you how I would adjust the muslin. I'm gonna use a paper pattern though to show you because I think it'll be clearer. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw the original seam lines on this pattern. Okay, so here are my seam lines that are sewn into the pants muslin already. So what you're going to do to test the theory of needing more room front to back is you're going to actually take out the inseam about seven inches down from the crotch front to back. Okay, so just take out the inseam there, right through the crotch seam. Then you're gonna sew it again, but this time when you sew it, you're gonna gradually go to as close to the raw edges as you can as you go across the crotch point, the crotch seam. Okay, so you're going to start at the original seam and just gradually stitch until you're about an eighth of an inch away from the raw edge and then just keep that going as you cross over and then blend back into the original seam, you know, about seven inches down. Okay. 
what that's going to do is it's going to give you three quarters of an inch of horizontal space. So from here to here, you've added three quarters of an inch. Take a new set of pictures and see if that helps. If it's relaxing the wrinkles, then you know you're on the right path. If you need to add a little bit more, you know, you can check and see if you need to add a little bit more by how it feels and how it looks. If this is working for you, let me show you how you'll adjust the actual pattern pieces. Now, the first thing you want to do is look at your inseam and see if you like the position of it. Meaning, is it too far forward? Is it too far back? Or is it in a good spot? If it's in a good spot, you're going to just add seam allowances equally to your new stitching line. So, for example, I would just measure out a half an inch from my new stitching line all the way down, so just measure out, and then draw that back in to extend the pattern to add that extra length there. And I would do that in the front as well. Let me just stick a piece of paper here. Okay, so I would just add, so I had the half an inch seam allowance back, and then of course you know you're blending right back to the original edge where you started sewing. So it's going to look something like that. Now if the front inseam is too far forward, then you can add the entire amount to the front. So the whole three quarters of an inch. And what that's going to do is it's going to push the inseam back up at the top. Okay, so then in that case I would just leave my back alone. So I'll just cut that off so you can see. Okay, so it would look like this. Now, if the reverse is true and you need to bring the inseam forward, you can do the reverse and add it all to the um, back. Now, I have one caveat for this. If you add this, and what it does is it makes your leg too loose, you have one other option that you can do. Okay, so if you have very slender upper thighs and adding that little bit is now causing it to be too big in the legs, the other option is instead of extending it out, you would extend, you would extend your crotch curve back, meaning you would extend it this way. So instead of, you know, instead of adding it at the crotch point, just dig out the back of the curve a little bit, and then you may have to let out your side seam a little bit. Okay, so that is another option that you can do. You can extend the crotch back a little bit, and then you may have to then add here. But usually, you can get away with adding that at the tip of the crotch if it's just that little bit to get rid of those wrinkles. Now let's look at the blue pair of jeans. You can see here that the blue jeans have those diagonal wrinkles going across the side seam from the side view. And what this means is the back leg is too long. So the first thing I would do is, let me just draw in my original stitching lines here, like that. Let me just cut off my inseam here. Okay. All right. So to fix the blue pair, what I would do is start approximately five inches above where it starts to curve in the back. And I would start stitching down. And as I got to where it starts to curve, I'm just going to continue down past the curve of the original seam. Then I'm going to turn in and I'm going to follow the shape of the original curve. Now here's the thing. You don't want to scoop, you know, an inch and a half or even an inch to start. 
the cool thing about this adjustment is you can do it and then if it's not enough you can add more or scoop down lower so I would say start with 3 8 or a half an inch and after you get that far below the original seam curve in and then as you get to your inseam, I'm just going to overlap these seam allowances here, you want to blend right back in as quickly as you can to the front crotch curve. So it's going to look something like this. Now notice by coming down and passing the original curve in the back, I'm maintaining my horizontal space. So I'm not scooping it down and making it more narrow. I'm keeping the space the same, but what I'm doing is I'm picking up fabric. Okay, so what I want to do here is show you that if I scoop down, my crotch level is now going to be somewhere over here, and my crotch level before I scooped is here. Okay, so you can see that the fabric between these two lines used to be below the crotch curve. Now it's above the crotch curve because we scooped down. You may need, so play with scooping until you've smoothed out the wrinkle on the back leg and your horizontal balance lines on your upper thigh and crotch are parallel to the floor. Then you can deal with this fabric that you've shifted. So as it stands right now, we haven't gotten rid of any vertical length on the back leg. We've just shifted it from below the crotch to above the crotch. Now sometimes having the fabric above the crotch level makes the waist sit better. So if adding the length actually made the top of your pants pattern fit better, it may be a little loose. You may have to take it in. Um, you can leave it, but if transferring it above the crotch then creates too much fabric there because it's drooping or the waist is too high, you're going to pleat it out across your full hip. So find your full hip area, draw a line, and then you're going to pleat out a similar amount to what you scooped. So if you scoop down 3 eighths of an inch, you may have to pleat out 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so you can play with that. So on an actual muslin, if you if you pinch it out at the center back seam, you can actually fold it out, you know, and you'd be going all the way across to the other side on a muslin. And then just sew that fisheye dart from zero at the side seam all the way across to zero at the other side seam and see how it feels. And you can play with it. This is a two-part process that will get rid of the fabric under here, put it up here, and then pleating it out gets it completely off your pattern. Now, one other thing that may happen, as you're scooping down, you're scooping to a smaller width of the leg. So your leg might start to feel tight. You're gonna want to let that out a little bit. Okay, and that's why I highly recommend adding safety seam allowances to your muslin when you cut it out. I like to add an extra inch and a half and then sew two inch seam allowances on my side seams when I'm fitting pants. That way I have plenty of room to let out the seam if we need to. All right, so that's how I would fix the blue pair of jeans. If you have any questions or comments about those adjustments, please post them below. If you're enjoying Fit Tip Tuesdays, consider subscribing to my channel. We're getting really close to 25,000 subscribers, and I just want to let you know, as soon as we get there, I'm going to have a celebration to thank everybody with some really cool giveaway prizes. So keep your eyes peeled for more information about the giveaway celebration and what those prizes will be. I want to thank you for watching today, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.